Hey guys, it's Rob Guilty again. All about Cape Town, all about property. And you know what? Today, I just want to talk to you a little bit about the biggest semigration known to mankind. And that is the semigration to Cape Town. So, I don't know if you know what semigration is. Semigration is a bit like immigration, only within a country. So without further ado, let's get to it. Let's go and talk about this. So yes, semigration. The semigration to Cape Town has been absolutely immense in the last few years, okay? In fact, about six years ago, I think there was a thousand people a month moving down to Cape Town at one stage. I don't know what the figures are now, and I'm not even going to go into the research, but what we are going to talk about is why on earth is this happening? What is going on in South Africa? Why is this happening in South Africa? Why is everyone moving to Cape Town? Now, from what I've seen and from what the people I've met and everyone that I've spoken to, it would appear that most people are coming from Gauteng. That is Johannesburg and Pretoria. I know the map. The map shows everyone in Cape Town thinks there's Cape Town and everything else is Johannesburg. Well, it's not like that, guys. There's a lot of other towns up there as well. There's more than just Johannesburg. So yes, Gauteng which is Johannesburg and Pretoria, <clears throat> basically northwest of Brits, lots of people coming from northwest. And then also Natal is another big one. So I would say the number one semigration is from Gauteng to Cape Town, and probably the number two is probably Natal to Cape Town as well. And then you've got Limpopo province, which was Limpopo province, Mpumalanga, whatever it's called now. And it, it, all the people from up there are also starting to move down. A lot of people from farms, people that used to live on farms, are moving into the city. Okay? And, and the discussion is, what causes this type of thing in a country? Is it, is it finance? Is, is it uh, economy? Um, but what is it really? And, and, and what we found is it's crime. At the end of the day, it's, it's the, the crime factor, not so much the crime factor as the, um, well, the, re the, the failure of the systems in those towns, um, the, the deterioration of the towns as such. The towns have deteriorated to such a state that people just don't want to stay there anymore. You know, it's, it's, be it's becoming, well, let's put it, uh, it's, it's not horrible, but it, it's, it's not nice either. So you, you kind of feel like you're living in a dump almost all the time, you know what I mean? So what, 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 what I've seen going up there and visiting and that sort of thing is um, when you arrive, you, you immediately notice that the roads have got potholes and the roads don't look good, the, the, the traffic lights are not working. We call them robots in South Africa. I remember my cousin came over and I said, stop at the robot. And he said, what the hell is a robot? A robot's one of those things that walk around and go, zzz, zzz, zzz. And no, no, that's the traffic light. <laughs> anyway, we call them robots in South Africa. And, and half of them are not working. There's people at the side of the road begging and jumping around and doing shows and all the rest of it. But you just don't feel safe because so many people are getting robbed inside their homes when they're sleeping at night people are breaking in and killing them for no reason at all people getting mugged and shot in their cars for no reason at all and um you know if they want your cell phone just shooting people because they'll just take a cell phone and run and they're dead for a stupid theft you know what i mean now it's not to say that crime doesn't happen in cape town it does but a much more normalized scenario occurs in cape town you get your, your gangs, you get your wars, you get your drug wars, um, you get your muggings, muggings, you know, they'll mug you, steal your cell phone, run away, at least you'll still be alive, you know, whatever the case. You get your house burglaries, robberies, things like that. Um, car thefts, uh, hijackings still happen. But people tend not to die when these things happen, okay? Most of the time. So that's the problem with the crime in those other towns at the moment is people are afraid of dying because what's happening is when a crime like this occurs or affects people, people end up dying. And it's not because of guns. Don't blame guns, guys. You know, that's that's absolute BS. Um, people are, who, who own the weapon are the people that, that cause the deaths, okay? People behind the weapon are the, people, are the things that cause the deaths, not the weapon. 
There'll always be weapons, guys. It's how you handle the weapons that, that makes all the difference. If you're a piece of rubbish that lies behind a weapon and blames the weapon that you, you killed the oak because you had a weapon, you are a piece of rubbish, okay? You killed someone at the end of the day and you should be punished for it. So, you know, statistics wise, I don't know, but this is what we are talking about at the moment. People that are coming here are saying they feel unsafe in those towns. They don't feel comfortable in those towns anymore. Everything's a mess. Now, it's very noticeable when you start seeing shops, stores, normal stores, normal shops, which in a normal high street are beautiful, you know, like nice frontal areas, things advertised, open windows, big windows, sliding doors that are open for you to come and go, that sort of thing. And you go up there and you start seeing the stores have got rotor shuttered doors that go down at night so that people can't break through. Or if they are open during the day, there's a gate, a security gate to go in and out of the store. And when you get into the store, there isn't a sort of place in the front where you can walk around and shop. You gotta to go to the counter and the guy's standing behind bars. That starts to question the safety of a city, all right? Why is that happening? Come on guys, why is that happening? I mean, let's be honest. Houses, houses up there are like fortresses. High walls, electric fences, uh, beams as they call them outside, you know, these laser beams that can catch people walking in the yard before they get to the house. So there's like three or four security systems before they even get to the house. And then when they get to the house, there's another security bar on the house itself. All And then, of course, besides the alarms, the windows are closed up with bars, the doors are closed. You're like, people are living in a prison there, man. If you come to Cape Town, there isn't even walls in front of half the houses. Half the people I've spoken to, um, being in real estate for a while, as, you know, they got a house alarm. You say, how does a house alarm? I don't know, I've never used it. You know, so you kind of question that. You know, there's a big difference between what's happening here and what's happening there. So the semigration would appear to have been caused not by inflationary matters or economic matters or moving for job or that sort of thing, People appear to be moving more for the safety than anything else. They're not moving for the happiness of the beach or the retirement on the beach or the palm trees or whatever the case, or the coconuts or the money or the getting a job or whatever the case. The people that are moving back, yes, those, those guys are moving for a job. I mean, that, that, that's, that's perfectly obvious. A lot of people are, uh, came down and studied at university and then went back home. That happens, that's perfectly obvious. Um, but most of the people that I know that move down here don't want to move back, don't want to go back, don't want to even see it again. And uh, it's, it's an interesting factor. So the semigration that we've had in the last few years has been absolutely phenomenal. So this has caused, in most areas, a housing boom, okay, property boom. So there's a huge amount of demand for property at the moment and, 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 and people are building left, right and centre. A lot of the builders that were up in those towns are moving down here now for the work actually <clears throat> because they can build all these properties and whatnot and the properties that are in existence are becoming more expensive simply because of the high demand. And what we're seeing a lot is properties that are needed that also include a flatlet for the parents because the parents struggle to move by themselves. So a flatlet is needed for the parents to go with the whole scenario. So that is starting to create an economy in Cape Town that's changing, that's growing. <clears throat> so the future of Cape Town is probably going to be the stock market moving to Cape Town also, you know, or, or one opening here at least. A lot of businesses moving down here, some more, more job opportunities are coming about here as well. That being in different sectors, not just real estate, which it has been for a long time. Look, let's be perfectly honest, Cape Town has survived on, on tourism and uh, partying and real estate and all that sort of thing over the years. And I think that's starting to change a lot. I think there's a lot of normal business moving down here. And you can actually see areas like Tableview, Bloberg and that sort of thing, which have grown immensely in the last six years, seven years you can actually see a similar scenario to, to Gauteng, Durban and that where the petrol stations are opening up on every corner, the big malls are opening up which weren't there before and 
more shops, more checkers, more pick and pay willies, those are just to name a few, a few names. I don't mean to name names on this video, but it's just of great interest that this is actually happening. So yeah, guys, I just thought I'd, I'd throw that out there a little bit about the same migration to Cape Town. And it would look, you can look at my previous videos with regards to crime. And I've had a lot of arguments with people regarding this. A lot of people say crime's the capital in, in Cape Town. Cape, well, Cape Town is the capital of crime in South Africa. That's absolute rubbish. Absolute rubbish. Watch my videos. I don't believe those statistics. Absolute rubbish. The capital of crime is up north. It's nowhere near Cape Town. Cape Town is probably one of the safest towns in South Africa to live in. End of story, okay? If you live in a proper area. So guys, with that, um, if you're into property, go down, read the Millionaire Real Estate Agent book. Get one of those books down there. Those books are absolutely phenomenal. will help you in your career if you're in that career. If you're looking to buy, sell homes, that sort of thing, I've got books down there as well that you can have a look at. You can click on the link and you can get it online. If you prefer, go and get them at hard copy in the, in the, in the shops. They're nothing to do with me. I'm not making money out of that. And also, um, go and check out our auto parts shop. We've got a Cape Town auto parts shop. It's an online store. It's down there in the description below. Like, comment and subscribe. Always like, comment and subscribe. That's really important if you like the videos. And guys, thank you so much for watching. I hope uh, you felt the same way as I do about this immigration. And hey, put it in the comments. Let me know in the comments what you think, what your thoughts are on the whole matter. And uh, while you're there, don't forget to subscribe. Till next time, guys, it's Rob Gill Teachers.